Today we're going to be going over chapter 19. Chapter 19 is a very interesting chapter. It's a good chapter. The textbook does a fantastic job of explaining the information, but at the same time it's still sometimes hard for students to understand exactly what they're talking about here. Now the first part of the chapter I'm not going to discuss. The first part goes through responsibility centers, and you need to be responsible for that. You need to know what a responsibility center is. But I'm going to be starting on page 949, the standard cost center. And for this chapter, we're only going to go through pages 959. So beginning of the chapter, all the way page, all the way to page 959, and then you can stop. Okay? So on page 949, start talking about the standard cost system. Now, in this chapter, what they're talking about is a boat. They're building a boat. And when you build a boat, the one they're building includes wood, some lumber, and fiberglass. And those are the materials that go into the boat. Then later they're going to talk about how much labor went into the boat, how many hours they worked, how many hours they should have worked. When we're talking about a standard cost system, what we're talking about is how much lumber, how much material should have gone into it, and how much labor should have gone into it. Because trust me, all businesses know what should go into it. They don't just let their employees decide how much should go into it because then employees might be lazy, might not do a good job. But if the employees know this is how much lumber should go into it, they're going to try their best to put just that amount in and not waste some of the lumber, not waste some of the fiberglass, not spend so much time on it. Because management's going to tell them, this is how long it should take you, and this is the materials that should go into it. So they have these standards, how much should go into it, labor and materials. So what we're going to look at first from this video is the material side of it. And then I'm going to do another video for the labor side, which is very simple. Once you get down the material side, the labor side is a piece of cake. So for the material side, these are the two variances that we're going to concentrate on. The materials price variance and the materials quantity variance. Now if you have your textbook, on page 952, it talks about the materials price variance. We're going to go through the example in the textbook. Now, note here that I have actual quantity times actual price. I'm going to compare that to the actual quantity that we use to build the boats, compared it to the standard price. You see, we have a standard for how much should have gone into it, and we also have a standard for how much it should have cost us. So in this example, the standard price is $10. Hold on. Just dropped my pen. So the standard price is $10. Now I'm at the bottom of page 952. The actual price was $9.60. So did they get a good deal here? It appears so. But that could be a problem because maybe the quality isn't as good. We're going to have to just see later. Okay. And so what's the actual quantity? Well, the actual quantity was. 9800 and 9800 obviously over here. So 9800 times $9.60 gets us $94,080. And we're going to compare that to $98,000. So what they're saying here, what they're saying is, look, this material that we purchased should have cost us $98,000. But our purchasing department, it looks like they did a pretty good job. You see, it only cost them $94,080. Okay, we would just go to the bill and we'd see this amount, $94,080. And then we'd look and we'd say, oh, we bought 9,800 square feet of lumber. Now remember, you've got to do this lumber, you've got to do this um, variance for the lumber and every other material. Okay, so obviously we're doing lumber here, but they also put fiberglass into the boat you'd have to do the same thing for the fiberglass also. We're not going to do that right now. We're just going to look at the lumber. So this is what our standard said we should have spent, but we only spent this amount. So all you have to do now is say, well, the difference is 3920 Is that favorable or is that an unfavorable variance? Well, that's a good variance, right? It appears to be good because we spent less, so you always have to write. If it's favorable, you're going to write F. If it's unfavorable, you write U. If you do not include this in your homework or on a test, you would get that wrong. 
Now we're going to move from the materials price variance, because we're, we were looking at the difference in the price. Look at the quantity stayed the same. What was different is the price. Now we're going to move to the quantity variance, which is actual quantity times standard price compared to standard quantity times standard price. Okay? Actual quantity, standard price, standard quantity, standard price. So what's different here is, well, our standard prices are the same because we're not measuring the price variance. In this one, we're measuring the quantity variance. So that one, that's why the quantity changes. Okay? Now, there is one difference here because here it says actual quantity. We're not going to use this same actual quantity. See, this was the actual quantity purchase because we're looking at a materials price variance. So we're looking at the purchase price. So we're looking at what we purchased. Well, over here, we're looking more at, well, as we're making the product, how much did we use? So this actual quantity is the actual quantity used. So there's a difference. Here the actual quantity is what we purchased. Here it's what we used. Now let me point something out. This is very, very important. On homework and on tests, this is how you're going to do it. You're going to use these two methods. Okay, because the textbook points out another method. Okay, now here, this is the bottom of page 952. On page 953, turn to your textbook, page 953, in that exhibit, they show materials price variance and materials quantity variance. See, they have materials price variance, you see in bold there, 4,060. We are not going to do it that way. We're not going to do it that way because they're calculating materials price variance based on actual quantity used. We're not doing materials price variance that way. We're doing materials price variance this way, the way they do it on page 952. But on page 953, the second half of that equation or of that exhibit shows a materials quantity variance. That is the way we're going to do it. We're going to do the materials quantity variance the way they show in that exhibit on page 953, but we are not going to do materials price variance the way they do it on page 953 exhibit. So, Let's go through this quickly. Actual quantity, well the actual quantity was 10,150. This is what they used times our standard price. So that gets us 101,500. So when they're building this boat, they used 10,150 feet of lumber. And the standard price we thought was going to be $10. Okay. Notice, once again, the actual quantity here was only 9,800 because this is a different one. This is what we purchased. Here we're looking at what we actually used as we built the boats. We don't care about what we purchased, what we used. Now we're going to compare that to our standard quantity. Well, how much materials should we have used? Well, if you read from the problem, it says we built 100 boats. And each boat requires 100 feet. So 100 boats times 100 feet of lumber gets us 10,000 feet. So 10,000 feet of lumber is what should have been used. The problem has to give you all this information. You may have to take that information and calculate stuff. But in this one, it told us 100 boats and each boat needed 100 feet of wood. So you have to take the 100 times the 100 and you get 10,000. Now times, what's our standard price? $10. So this is 100000 This is what it should have cost us in materials to make those boats, those 100 boats. This is what it did cost us. So we've got a $1,500 variance. Now, is that variance favorable or unfavorable? Well, we used this much material. We should have used that much material. We used too much. So that is an unfavorable variance. And that might go back to our problem here. This was good, favorable variance, but did we purchase lower quality materials? And is that what caused this to be an unfavorable variance? This manager who builds the boats possibly might not be happy with the purchasing manager because maybe these materials aren't as good. If I were the manager of building the boats, that would be the first place that I would look and say, hey, don't blame me for this unfavorable variance. Let's go look over here. Maybe the materials weren't as good. Okay, so that's the materials price, materials quantity variance. There's going to be another video on the labor rates. So when you're done with this one, uh, I would very soon look at the labor variances. 
and they follow the same pattern. All right? Good luck, class.